Hello everyone, and welcome to the third episode in a series where we create a design system in Figma, called FDS. In this episode, we'll be creating our semantic color variables. But before we do, let's create the two primitive colors I missed creating in the last episode, black and white, which should be uh, pretty easy. Let's open up variables. We can see everything we did last time. I'm gonna create a color variable called black. Change this to 000000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000. hit enter. I'm gonna create another one called white. Leave that as it is. And later on, we're gonna make some overlays. So we're gonna need 50% black and white. So let's do that now. Let's duplicate that, go 50. Open up a swatch, change opacity here to 50, and then do the same for white. Let's select them all, right click, and then go new group. And let's call this primary. And then just move that to the top. All right, now that's done. Let's learn about semantic color variables. Semantic colors have meaning and a name based on how they're used, not what they look like. A good way to visualize this is to look at the example below. The hex value has been assigned to the primitive color, and that's been assigned to the semantic color, which has been used as the background of the button component. For dark mode, you simply change the primitive variable that is assigned to background brand from brand 500 to brand 400, and if your set of brand primitive variables changes color, like from blue to purple, it'll do that across the entire system and the products that consume it. And as for naming, we use the schema in the table below to name our semantic variables. Okay, so we start with the group. So which group do they belong to? Content will be text and icons. Backgrounds, of course, or anything in the background. Borders are borders. Surfaces are for like uh, elevation. And then overlay are for things when you see a modal appear and then the background goes dark. The roles are primary, secondary, tertiary. So that's like hierarchy, brand, mono, link, info, notice for like warning, negative for things like errors and positive for success. Appearance, bold, subtle, and inverse. States, so these are normally associated with buttons like hover, focus, pressed, selected, and disabled. Then you've got your values for like elevation from L0 to L6 plus 50 for the overlays I mentioned just previously, which gives us things like content link hover, background primary pressed, border subtle, surface L3 or overlay inverse 50. Okay, now let's create our semantic variables. If we open up the variables window, we could create them manually by creating a collection called semantic and then spend one to two hours adding each one individually. Instead, I've used the component of the variables color style plugin created in the last episode and laid out what we need for our light and dark modes in a table ready to be turned into our variables. You can see our groups, roles, and modifiers come together to form a set of variables that are easy to read, understand, and create a mental model when you read them that tell you how to use them. And if we zoom in and just read some out, we can see how that mental model comes together. Content primary, so I want content, which is hierarchy primary. Content link, I want content, that's a link. Content negative can be used for negative text and icons. We go to the background. Background brand, brand hover, and brand pressed can be used for the primary button. And yeah, we just keep on going through. Like uh, border notice is a border that's showing notice or like a warning. The surface levels are surface L1 for level 1, L4 for level 4, and then you have overlay 50, which is a black at 50%. Okay, if I select a color layer, you can see that I've got content primary. Now in episode 2, we used the styler plugin to create styles from these types of layers. And although it's great at doing so, there's nothing I've found that will convert those styles into variables that retain the color variable. So how we've got neutral 900. They normally just get translated to hex values. That just means we'll have to do a bit of manual work. So let's select the color layers and run the style of plugin. Okay, I'm just gonna hold down Command Shift and then start selecting all of the content ones. And hopefully when we do this, everything ends up in the right order. Okay, let's run Styler. 
and then go generate styles and then take a look. Okay, so we get a content folder, but everything's out of order. Let's go and create the rest and then fix the order a bit later. Okay, background set. Run styler again. Let's check that. Okay, and that's out of order as well. Let's grab the border ones. Run styler again. Generate styles. This is gonna create the surface ones as well as the effects for the shadows. So let's do that. Then the last two, which are the overlay ones. One last time. All right, so everything's out of order. I'm gonna go off and fix that and then uh, basically fade out and fade back in. See you soon. All right, we're back and everything's now put back into order. So we can also change the effect styles that were called surface as well to shadow, which will allow you to use like L1 as the surface level and then L1 shadow as the surface level one shadow. Okay, now let's run the style to variables plugin to convert those styles into variables. There it is. And we're gonna enter semantic here and create them. All right, it says that 54 were created. Let's go and take a look. Let's open up the variables panel and drop this down and go to semantic. Okay, great. I'm just gonna select uh, each one. And yeah, you can see that in the value here, it hasn't brought over the assigned color variable. And it's also done something interesting where it's taken out the space for each of these. So let's put them back. Uh, I expect I'm gonna have to do that throughout the whole set, but that's okay. Let's get a background. Yeah, similar thing. Into border, that's fine. Surface is fine and overlay just needs one there. Now if we select all, this is actually light mode. So let's change that to light. And then all we have to do from here is go back and assign all the color variables again like this, right? So this is actually the hex value for neutral 900, but we're gonna have to drop that down every single time, go to libraries and then type in neutral 900. And even though that's assigned properly, we're gonna to have to do that for all of the other ones as well. And instead of you are uh, just sitting there watching me do it or watching a fast forwarded version of me doing it, I'm just gonna fade out, fix it, then come back. See you soon. Okay, we're back again and you can see that uh, light mode's been fixed. All the color variables are assigned to the semantic variables properly. And what we have to do now to make the dark mode is go up here and press new variable mode. Rename this to dark, but it's the same values, right? So we have to go and change this to white. So we go all the way to the top. So it matches our setting over here where we've got neutral 900 and then primary right on the right hand side. So this is the color that content primary, which is like uh, your headings are in light mode. And this is the color that it is in dark mode, basically. So that makes sense. And again, I'm gonna to have to go through all of these and swap them for their correct values here. So I, uh, yeah, I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, I'm back for the third time. Awesome. We now have our semantic variables in light and dark modes. And if we scroll down, you can see everything's been relinked nicely. Okay. Let's close that. Uh, just like in episode two, we no longer need the styles. So I'm just gonna go and delete them. See a little background, border, surface, overlay. And we're gonna keep the shadows because Figma doesn't have variables for them yet. Now, if we come back to the documentation, it's kind of done already. All we have to do now is assign the semantic variables we just created to the color squares in our table. So content primary here, that is neutral 900, would change to content primary. Now, instead of going through and doing all of that now, fading in and out again, basically, I'm gonna create two files. One will be where we picked up at the beginning of this tutorial, and one will be at the end, where all of this is done for you. 
Now, both of those are gonna be available in the link in the description. And that's it for semantic color variables. In the next episode, we'll be doing topography. I hope you're looking after yourselves and each other, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.